So over the past few days, I've been doing a whole load of testing on the Rogue. We want to go ahead and compare the Assassin versus Whisper Knife and ultimately find the best setup to maximize your single target damage against those bosses. Which Paragon should you be using and then which power setup? Keep in mind, I pretty much do the same test on the other classes too and we can ultimately compare them all versus each other once we've got them all tested out. So for now, this is just a rogue, and let's jump in. Each of the tests is done in the training room here at 20,000 ratings, and we summon an ally here, and the boss here, we get combat advantage, and we attack our target. However, in order to get a fair test across again all the classes, and with all of the individual tests, we use these test rules. A very important thing to note is a 3 minute plus duration. You kind of want to end it after the fourth artifact call, so you can get that peak highest dps and we do that for all our tests so we can compare equally so with that aside let's jump into my best single target setup that i found after all my testings after i showcase this i will present the breakdown of all the other setups which compare with it so ultimately i have found whisper knife performs just better overall than assassin in terms of maximum damage potential so we go with Whisper Knife and you'll want to have your Disheartening Strike here and your Cloud of Steel. Then you will want to go with your Lashing Blade, your Impact Shot and then your Shadow Strike. As for your daily powers, you want Hateful Knives. Class Features, you will want your Tenacious Concealment and your Dagger Threat. As for the fates, you all want shady preparation to make sure you're squeezing out as many encounter rotations as possible. Then you all want dark reimbursement, one with the shadows, shadow of demise, and your ambusher's haste. And that's your power setup. Let's dive into the rotation and gameplay of the test. So we start things off, Disheartening Strike, Artifact, Stealth, Shadow Strike, Lashing Blade, Impact Shot, Mount, Power, Stealth, Hateful Knives, Shadow Strike, Lashing Blade, Impact Shot. That's your Artifact call rotation right there. And you will get two Shadow of Demise activations within that one Artifact call. Outside of that, you're just making sure you maintain the Disheartening Strike buff. You can use Disheartening Strike when your Shadow of Demise triggers. And then you're just using your same rotation as like in the Artifact call. It's your Stealth, Shadow Strike, Lashing Blade, Impact Shot. There is a way you can optimize it slightly further by basically triggering one with the Shadows a little bit before your Shadow Demise triggers. That way you will have the 5% uh, buff from one with the Shadows for your next Shadow Strike and Lashing Blade. I did not do that here. We tried to things keep things a little bit simple. If we add too much complexity, we end up making a mess. Here we're in the next artifact call already. Mount, Stealth, Daily Power, Shadow Strike, Lashing Blade, Impact Shot. It all happens really quickly and you gotta get the muscle memory and the timing perfect in order to maximize the damage here. But the payoff is just huge. You can output an absolute ton of single target damage. Shadow of Demise is going to be like the biggest contributor to your overall damage. Over 30% of your damage comes from that feat. It's basically getting buffed also with Module 28, going up to 50% of all the damage you deal is done back to the attacker. Again, that's after five seconds, but it's actually six seconds once you've triggered it by using an encounter power while within stealth. So again, Outside of the artifact call, you can see that rotation. It's just stealth, shadow strike, lashing blade, impact shot. That allows you to maximize your damage output. Here again, the next artifact call. And yeah, it's just that same series of encounter powers with then the stealth, hateful knives, shadow strike, lashing blade, and impact shot. And that maximizes your entire damage potential there. Using the Shadow Strike from Stealth allows you to gain the 40% damage buff with it from your Ambusher's Haste feat. Same with the Daily Power, that's why you use it from Stealth before you use the Shadow Strike to maximize the damage buff. And it does decrease when your Stealth decreases while you're within Stealth. So again, you want to use the big hit early, that's why the Daily Power 
Other than that, you just want to make sure you're keeping your timing as tight as possible. One thing that can screw you over with this setup is running into the issue with, say, one with the shadows not triggering during the artifact call. If you don't have one with the shadows with the artifact call here, you won't get the stealth back to be able to go into your daily power. You can see we use the series of encounters here. We get the one with the shadows. We can go straight back into stealth, use the daily power, use our encounter powers again. And that's the artifact call over. And that's the final one living at us a whopping 1.678 million encounter DPS. Compared to all the other classes that I have tested, this is huge. You can check my previous tests on some of the other classes. I'll show you the data later on in this video again as well. But yeah, you can totally see how Shadow of Demise is just a massive contributor to your damage. We've got that over three minute mark as per the test rules. And yeah, we're getting like 20 hits of Shadow of Demise. What you want to be careful and be aware of is you want to get two of those Shadow of Demise hits for the artifact call. And you'll see that here. So one's hits for like nearly 16 million. That's because it's got the mount and the daily power with it. And the follow up one still hits for over 5 million to nearly 6 million because it's got the next set of encounter powers all done within the artifact call. And so, yeah, in an artifact call, you're getting over 20 million damage with this setup just from Shadow of Demise. And then you have still all of your other abilities. Overall, Whisper Knife will get about 66% of their damage, so two thirds from an artifact call. So they're really important. And that's just 10 seconds. So you need to perfect your timing on that or you will be losing a lot of damage overall. So it's not exactly the easiest class to play with those strict requirements and strict rotation requirements. However, I did go and test with other setups, other powers, so on and so forth, even comparing Assassin. And you can see, yeah, this test comes out on top by quite a bit. The other things we did test out was say Lurker's Assault plus Razor's Action because you don't need Tenacious there. But yeah, it falls behind a little bit in damage. You can see that log here. You do get an extra damage boost to say your mount power from the daily power, but it's not really worth giving up your hateful knives. However, it's a little bit easier to play and it's more front loaded in the way that you squeeze a lot more of your damage into one Shadow of Demise rather than two. So if you need like quick burst damage, let's say you don't have the full 12 seconds for your two Shadow of Demises, then this would be a better setup. But otherwise, yeah, we did check then when say Lurker's Assault and Tenacious, a bit less damage, and then comes Assassin. Now, before we jump into that, I also wanna show you the gameplay of it. We look at the other Whisper Knife setups that we did try, and these setups are using Shadowy Opportunity. That's all of them here. And none of them really can compete with Shadow of Demise at all. However, you will want to use these setups, especially this fifth setup here, when you are in mixed content, but it does require separate loadout and using this ability. So all of your attacks will basically deal 150 extra damage with that. The rotation is just here. And again, you just need to be aware you never use Blade Flurry so it goes on cooldown. You only ever use it from stealth and then you follow that up with Smoke Bomb and Path of the Blade. However, let's jump to this assassin test and see how well that performs versus the top whisper knife and kind of how you're required to play that. Is it say any easier? So you kind of want to have your bleed set up, then you're going artifact, wicked reminder, lashing blade from stealth, assassinate, daily power, stealth, lashing, mount power, assassinate, wicked reminder. And that's your artifact call on assassin. It does pretty decent burst damage. You can see there we dealt like over 50 million, but that's still a bit behind of what you would get with your Whisper Knife on the Shadow of Demise path. And otherwise, you just have to maintain bleeds all the time, and then you kind of want to mix in some Goloming cuts in order to maximize that. But it's not 
that important, to be honest, that I found with my testing. It can be good and you'll want to get used to the timing and it can be annoying as well. It's not as straightforward as say, whisper knife, you just use your powers in rotation and you're set. Here, yeah, in order to maximize it, you can't just say use only Duelist Flurry and you can't just use only Gloaming Cut. You lose a lot of damage and your bleeds only last for eight seconds. So you continually have to keep using a Duelist Flurry every eight seconds. And you also have to be aware of the cast time of Duelist Flurry. It's only the last like hits that actually put bleed on the target. So it's overall quite a long cast time. Other than that, you can just use, say, encounter powers off cooldown outside of the artifact call. That isn't that big of a deal. Just using Lashing Blade with the stealth, because that then has over a thousand magnitude, which is actually even more damage than, say, Assassinate. But again, artifact calls are still very important here on Assassin, particularly your rotation. It's pretty crucial. You get the powers exactly in the correct order. You screw that up and you screw up all your damage. So you're gonna start things here again. We're gonna go with the artifact first, Wicked Reminder, Stealth Lashing, Assassinate, Shocking Execution, Stealth Lashing, Mount Power, Assassinate, and Wicked Reminder. And that's the 10 seconds artifact call. A big spike in damage and DPS. And again, we're going all the way to four artifact calls. So we still have another minute left and the boss's hit points is reducing over time. Be aware that I am considering assassinate getting a 25% damage buff in my end results when we compare versus say whisper knife on that DPS chart because yeah, again, we're in front of our enemy here, which normally we would be behind, and thus assassinate would deal 25% extra damage. So again, with that in mind, we are at that 1.37 million encounter DPS as per the chart earlier. Overall, I found assassin pretty much the hardest to play versus any setups I used on rogue overall. I found it harder to play than even the whisper knife rotation. It was just, yeah, it requires a lot more timing. You need to make sure you're maintaining bleeds and interweaving gloaming cuts. It is something to get used to. It can do pretty well, but yeah, not nearly as good as say Whisper Knife with Shadow of Demise, particularly since Shadow of Demise is getting buffed with the next update, Mondo 28. It's going to 50% versus 40%. You can see again the math right here. I did do a test in say, Chult against the boss dummy, and we were getting that 211,000 DPS with Assassinate. So we're just replacing what we got here in this test with that, and that results in the DPS there, which results in the ranking of Assassin here. So, yeah, the conclusion is I would just run with Whisper Knife and this setup here on Rogue instead of, say, Assassin. But that's not to say Assassin isn't that bad. It's okay. Just be aware that we are not testing with Smoke Bomb and Toxic Blades because that interaction is going to be gone, which results in Smoke Bomb not nearly dealing enough damage to compensate and you're just better off using a single target encounter power instead against those bosses. And just to be clear, that has been fixed already on Module 28 meaning I can't actually test that out and it will be gone this next Tuesday. That does mean that your damage will go down significantly if you were crutching that to output that damage. And you will need to, again, switch to the setup that I just used there. I don't really see any other assassin setup that's going to be as nearly as effective, like using Death Strike. Where's the point to use it versus Wicked when it has the same magnitude and it's only slightly lower cooldown and most of your damage comes from the artifact call anyway and the cooldowns are relevant during the artifact call. Just be aware as well, we are using two insignia bonuses, Tactician's Precision, to make sure we're getting the cooldown reduction to be able to cast that many encounter powers in their correct order in those setups. Also another little feature on Assassin that you might not be aware of is that Duelist Flurry only gives you 10 stacks of bleed 
However, it can actually give you 11 stacks of bleed, but not show it. Your bleed at max 10 stacks is 150 magnitude, but you can actually get that to 165 magnitude with 11 stacks, meaning you have to use three Duras flurries. So yeah, make sure you're doing that before, say, the first artifact call. You can see how it checks out exactly, 128,000 versus 141,000, which matches exactly with the math. 150 magnitude versus 165. Again, via this sheet here, you can see the exact powers using exact feats and features, and then the exact rotation. You need this exact order of use of your powers in order to get that exact timing. And you have to be really quick on this too. Like you have to be casting the next ability immediately when you can after you've cast your first one in order to actually be able to fit all of these attacks within the 10 seconds. Like if you're anyway a bit slower or get a bit of lag, you're gonna miss a impact shot from being within the artifact call and you lose like a ton of damage. And very importantly again, these rotations only work with a tactician's precision, the mount insignia bonus, which gives you that massive cooldown reduction after you use a daily power. Without that, your damage would be significantly less as you would only get like one set of encounter powers out rather than two. So you really need that for end game builds. So last thing, let's just quickly compare versus the other classes we have tested. How good is 1.67 million encounter DPS? So when I checked Ranger after it did receive all of the buffs that are coming with Model 28, that was only getting up to nearly 1.4 million encounter DPS. Fighter, I was getting about 1.46 million encounter DPS. Wizard was nearly 1.5 million encounter DPS. And finally, Barbarian, which I need to do further tests on still, I was at nearly 1.4 million encounter DPS. So versus all of those, yeah, Rogue is coming out on top by quite a bit. So hopefully that's somewhat insightful shows you kind of what you could be playing on your rogue to maximize damage output in those boss fights. That's where it's the most important. So once again, thank you for watching. A massive thank you to all of these channel members for your added support. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.